In this part, we'll look at sliding surface bearings. Sliding surface bearings can be divided into two categories based on the type of load they're generally designed to handle. The two categories are journal bearings and thrust bearings. Journal bearings are generally designed to handle radial loads, while thrust bearings are generally designed to handle axial loads. Journal bearings typically consist of a metal sleeve that fits around a shaft. The sleeve is held in place within a housing. The journal is simply the place on the shaft that is surrounded and supported by the bearing. Journal bearings can be made out of metallic or non-metallic materials. Examples of common metallic bearing materials include bronze or brass. This example of a non-metallic bearing material is called phenolic. This fibrous synthetic material is used in power generating applications because it does not conduct electricity. Another common bearing material is called babbit. Babbit is a soft alloy comprised of tin, copper, and antimony. Babbit is usually bonded to a shell of harder metal to give the bearing strength. Bearings are generally made out of material that is softer than the metal of the shaft. This helps to protect the shaft by allowing the bearing material to wear out first. Journal bearings usually have a lubricant groove on the inside surface of the bearing. This groove generally runs parallel to the shaft and helps distribute oil or grease along the shaft, where the shaft passes through the bearing. There are two basic types of journal bearings, solid journal bearings and split journal bearings. Solid journal bearings consist of a solid one-piece sleeve mounted in a one-piece housing. A solid journal bearing is sometimes called a bushing or a sleeve bearing, depending on its thickness. A bushing is a relatively thin, solid journal bearing that gets most of its strength from the housing in which it is mounted. The term sleeve bearing generally refers to a thick-walled journal bearing. A split journal bearing consists of a two-piece bearing mounted in a two-piece housing. The advantage of a split journal bearing over a solid journal bearing is that it can be separated into two halves. A split journal bearing is easier to service since it can usually be separated and removed from around the shaft without removing the shaft itself. Solid journal bearings can be more difficult to replace than other types of journal bearings. Frequently, they must be slipped on and off the end of the shaft, or the shaft must be removed through the bearing. Let's look at thrust bearings. Thrust bearings are used to handle axial or thrust loads. Thrust bearings are generally seated against a raised collar around the shaft. This raised collar, often referred to as a thrust collar, provides a surface that the bearing sits against. The thrust collar allows axial load to be transferred from the shaft to the bearing. Thrust bearings are often used in pairs, one on either side of a thrust collar, to handle axial loads that come from both directions along the shaft. There are two general types of thrust bearings, flat land bearings and tilting pad bearings. Flat land bearings are made of a single flat disc with no moving parts. The surface of the disc has grooves cut in a radial direction across the surface. The grooves divide the surface into sections called lands. Lubricant flows between the bearing and the thrust collar along the grooves. As the thrust collar turns against the bearing, lubricant in the grooves is distributed over the contact surface of the bearing. The other type of thrust bearing is a tilting pad bearing. This type of bearing is commonly known as a Kingsbury thrust bearing. A tilting pad bearing typically consists of movable metal plates called thrust shoes, a support bracket, and a pin or key to prevent the bearing from turning with the shaft. The thrust shoes rest on the support bracket and contact the thrust collar on the shaft. They are pivoted to allow them to move slightly.